Masalhan. Marhaba. Let's begin our session with the mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nahmaduhu nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem amma ba'd. We're going to cover from Jews 1 to Jews 30. We will continue this journey. First, we should renew our intention. Everything we are doing to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, adada ma khalqa. All praises is for Allah. As much as the number of his creation, Alhamdulillah, mil'a ma khalqa. All praises is for Allah as much as what can fill his creation. Alhamdulillah, adada ma fi samawati wa ma fil earth. All praises is for Allah as much as the number of what is in the sky and the earth. Alhamdulillah, adada ma ahsa kitabuhu. All praises is for Allah as much as the number of what his book contains. So when we are learning the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah open our chest and make things easy and understandable. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa sirli amri wa ahlu luqtatam min lisani yakkahu kawli. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in the Quran, like, قُلْ لَا إِنْ اِجْتَمَعْتِ الْإِنْسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَعْتُوا بِمِسْلِ هَذَا الْقُرَانَ لَا يَعْتُونَ بِمِسْلِ وَلَوْ كَانَ بَعْدُهُمْ لِبَادٍ زَهِيرًا Surah Al-Isra at number 88 say if mankind and jinn all of them gather together in order to produce the like of this Quran they could not produce the like of it even if they were to each other assistance the Quran is the book of Allah the speech of Allah is a message and a miracle it is a guidance and a healing and it is an instruction and blessing so the one who follows it is, is upon guidance and the one who leaves it upon misguidance the one who follows it it is led to the ways of subul as salam the ways of peace to the straight path sirat mustaqim he is brought out of darknesses mina zulumati into the light of ilan nur so allah al aswajal tell us to reflect his book kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun Surah to Sada number 29. This is a blessed book which we have revealed to you, O Prophet, that they might reflect upon its verses and those of understanding would be reminded. And taking lesson from this book is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has facilitated. He has made it easy. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرَانَ لِذِكْرِ فَحَلْ مِمْ مُدَّكِرْ Surah Al-Qamar A number 17 And we have certainly made the Quran easy for the remembrance. So is there any who will remember? So there is a hadith regarding learning the Quran is one of the best gift a person can give themselves. Spending time with the book of Allah is one of the best form of self-care. Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu said Man arada ilma Like whoever intends to inquire the knowledge then he should reflect on the Quran So he should do Falyada dabbarul Quran This knowledge does not just bring information to a person but knowledge that lets them have a taste of eternal pleasure Ibn Tahmiya said, there is no pleasure in the world that is same as the pleasure of hereafter except for the pleasure of Iman and the pleasure of knowledge. Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahmatullah said, Allah the Exalted has made knowledge for hearts like a rain is on the earth. So just as there is no life for the earth without rain, there is no life for the heart without the knowledge. So let us begin with calling upon Allah Azwajal. Allahumma anfana bima allam tana. O oh Allah, benefit us by what you teach us. Wa allimna ma yanfana. And teach us what will truly benefit us. Wa zuhna ilman nafana. So, tanfana bihi means give us knowledge by which you will benefit us. Surah Al-Fatiha Ibn Abbas radiallahu reported that while Jibrail al-Islam was sitting with Prophet sallallahu he heard a creaking sound above him. 
he lifted his head and said, This is a gate that is open in the heaven. So, this is the gate which is open in the heaven. And this gate, creaking sound was there, which had never been opened before. Then, when angel descended through it, he said, This is an angel who came down on the earth, who had never came down before. He greeted and he said, Rejoice over two lives given to you, which have not been given to any prophet before you. Suratul Fatiha and concluding verses of Suratul Baqarah, that is second Surah chapter 2. He said, You will never recite a letter from them for which you will not be given a reward. So Mufassirun have listed 36 names of Suratul Fatiha. And this also tells us how important this surah is. This in fact the only surah that is actually praised in the Quran by the Allah, the exalted. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Surah Al-Hijr ayah number 87 We have certainly given you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Seven of the oft repeated verses, meaning the verses of Suratul Fatiha and the Great Quran. Suratul Fatiha has seven verses. We all know that. Like uh, the first surah we learn is Suratul Fatiha. Fataha Yaftahu means opening. And with Suratul Fatiha, the opening of the Quran. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, specially merciful. So here it starts with the praising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's name is very blessed. It is very powerful and this is why we begin by taking his name. Tabaraka ismu rabbika zil jalali wal ikram. Surah Ar-Rahman ayah number 78. Allah's name is blessed because it is his primary and most comprehensive name and in cooperates and necessities and all his beautiful and perfect names because Allah the one who is worshipped is and must be Ar-Rahman he must be Ar-Rahim he must be Al-Alim Al-Basir he must have the most perfect names or else he wouldn't be worshipped so when person says Bismillah in the name of Allah realize the power of Bismillah who is Allah? He is Ar-Rahman, the one who is extremely merciful, who, whose mercy is Vasi, it is encompassing, it is arm, it affects everybody. And He is Rahim, the, the one who is ever merciful over and over again. So whose mercy is, uh, you know, continuous. So when the name of Allah is taken, there is blessing and there is mercy. This is why we begin with the recitation of the Quran by first seeking Allah's refuge against the evil of shaitan. Then we invoke Allah for his blessing and mercy. A'uzu billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim. We beg Allah for protection and we beg Allah for his blessing so that we are able to gain the benefit that we seek from the Quran. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises is due to Allah who is the Lord of the worlds. Alhamdu Kullahu. All praises. Every kind of praise is for Allah. So Hamd is with the Qawl. It is verbally expressed whereas Shukr, gratitude can be just in the heart. And Hamd is more than just gratitude. It is to praise and commend someone with love and reverence for the good that they possess. Not just in return for a favor that one has received from them. That is shukar. Hamd is to praise with love and reverence. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُلْ حَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Surah Al-Naml na, Ayah number 93 Say Alhamdulillah This is verbally expressed And we learn Surah Al-Zumar Ayah number 75 Wakil Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen In Jannah it will be said All praises is for Allah Lord of the world The question is why Alhamdulillah Because Wama Bikum 
all that we have every single blessing that we have in fact from Allah especially the blessing of the Quran the fact that Allah has given us this opportunity that he gave us the ability to open his book he gave us the ability to exert the effort and spend some time with it he gave us his love he gave us the love for his book the eagerness to remember him this is a blessing and remember if we do not praise Allah then it doesn't matter because everything in the existence is already praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Isra number 44 وَإِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّهُ بِحَمْدِ and there is not a thing except that it exalts Allah by His praise even at this moment the sky is praising Allah the ground you are on praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything the trees rocks and even our body so how excellent it would be if we join in praise uh, uh, Allah but verbalizing with our tongues a praise that is with gratitude in our hearts with love praise that is offered with love adoration and with reverence alhamdulillah alhamdulillah for his blessing the blessing which he prepared for us before we were even created so alhamdulillah like this has so much vastness and you know alhamdulillah for the blessing he bestowed on us in our lives and who is he Rabbil Alameen the Rabb of all worlds the creator of all provider of all the owner of all from whom we have come and to whom is our return Alhamdulillah this is a phrase that will fill the scales Tamalul Mizan the scale in which the deeds will be weighed on the Day of judgment when a person says alhamdulillah with their hearts consciously then, then the reward is great when a slave prays Allah Allah does not return them empty-handed and on the day of judgment also the best servant the most superior servant will be alhamdun the who those who praise Allah the most why do they praise because he is Rabbul Alameen Ayah number three, we are doing Suratul um, Fatiha repeatedly, repeatedly merciful. Meaning Allah is not only Rab, not only the Creator, but His favors are also many. Think about it. He gave us sustenance. He gave us uh, good things in life. His mercy encompasses everything. Wa rahmati wa siyat kulla shayin. Suratul Araf 156. Every Muslim. Momin, kafir, munafir, every single person is affected by his mercy. But remember that his special mercies are for special servants because he is a Rahman and a Rahim. His mercy will be continuous upon his special servants in the hereafter forever for always they will receive his special mercy and in uh, and this is Jannah about which Allah said, Anti Rahmati Arhama Biki Min Ashyau. You are only my mercy by means of which I shall show mercy to those whom I wish. We ask Allah to admit us into Jannatul Firdos with His special mercy. Because even though our deeds are not worthy, His mercy is truly vast. Maliki Yomitin, He is the Malik of Yomitin. So Allah is the Maliki Yomitin. When we say Maliki Yomitin, who is sovereign, the day of recompense, to whom everyone will return. Allah Azwajal is Malik, the sovereign to whom everyone will return on the day. Then all of us will be repaid of our deeds. And on that day, Allah will say, Man jaa bil hasanati falahu khairum minha. Whoever comes on the day of judgment with a good deed will have better. Wa man jaa sayyati fala yudzal lazina amilu sayyati illa ma kanu yamalun. Surah Al Qasas, number 84. And whoever comes with an evil deed, those who did evil deeds, 
will not be recompensed except as much as what they used to. Iyaka na budu wa iyaka na stain. It is only you, we worship and only you, we ask for help. Meaning, when you are Allah, worthy of all praises and all blessings and good things are from you, then you only are worthy of worship. Means, here talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, absolute adoration, kamalul hub. Kamalur Raja, absolute hope. Kamalul Qawf, absolute fear. Wa iya ka nastain. Then we meaning we pray to him, we make dua to him because dua is the essence of worship. It is an in fact worship, and because la haul wa la quwata illa billah, there is no might, no power except with the help of Allah. Ibn Tahmiya said, when I reflected over which dua is most uh, beneficial dua, meaning the best and the most important supplication, I realized that it is the dua for seeking Allah's help to perform deeds, perform deeds that please Him. And I found this dua in the world, Iyaka na budu wa iyaka nastain. This is the best dua. The fact we need Allah's help to worship, to obey Him, to leave sins, to be patient over the trials of this life. And at the time of death also we need His help. We need His help over what follows death. And there is no one who is able to help us in this matter except Allah. That is why. But iyaka nastain. And remember that ibadah, worship is not just a state of heart but it includes ritual worship also in fact it includes every word every deed whether it is internal in the heart in the private in the external on the limbs or in public that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and pleased with so any word we say action that we do even if it's a thought if it pleases Allah if it is done in the way that Allah likes then in fact it is a Ibadah. It is something rewardable. But it should be according to Quran and Surah. This should be according to Sharia, not our own laws. You guide us to the straight path. Guidance is one of the most important thing one can pray for. Because if a person has guidance, that means that they have taqwa, they have consciousness of Allah. And if they have taqwa, they will find a way out from every trouble and receive sustenance from where they cannot even imagine also when a person has taqwa they are truly successful that is why we should ask allah for guidance repeatedly think about it in five daily prayers we ask allah for hidayah guidance at least 17 times we recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Why? Because we are in need of guidance. Always in need of guidance. Ali Radiallahu said that Prophet Sallallahu advised me keep asking uh, Allah Allahumma hadini wa saddidni that uh, oh Allah direct me to the straight path. Make me adhere to the straight path. So always ask this dua. And meaning, don't let me go here and there. Let me remain firm on the straight path. Even when someone bothers you, when someone harms you, then pray for their guidance. You know, this is the best dua one can make for the guidance. Don't pray against them. When Prophet ﷺ was asked to pray against the tribe of those, he said, Allahumma hadi, thou said, O oh Allah, guide the people of thou. So we say, Ehdina sirat al mustaqim Ya Allah, guide us to the straight path, the path that will take us to your pleasure. Pleasure of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we say, Sirat al lazina anam ta'alayhim, so the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor. Meaning the path of the people that you are pleased with. Not of those who evoked your anger or of those who are astray. Meaning we want to be on the path of righteous. And who are they? They are prophets, truthful, righteous, martyrs. O oh Allah, the way they were sincere to you, the way they were worked to please you, you grant us ability to be sincere and do things that pleases you and you save us from being like those who ended up with your anger. 
means those who were given knowledge but they did not act upon it and we also don't want to be like those people who went astray dalala from the sirat e mustaqim straight path so we want to be on the path of those who were upon guidance amin suratul fatiha which is a surah like any other the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said allah has not revealed in torah nor in the injil any surah like suratul fatiha and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about suratul fatiha i have divided this between me and my slave and this surah is called as-sala prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that allah says i had divided the prayer into two halves between myself and my servant my servant shall have what he ask for when servant says alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin allah says my servant has praised me when servant says ar rahman ir rahim allah says my servant has glorified me when servant says maliki yawmiddin allah says my servant has entrusted of all matters to me when the servant says iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in allah says this is between me and my servant my servant shall have what he ask for and when the servant says ihdina sirat al mustaqim sirat al ladina namta alaihim ghayri al maghdubi alaihim wal dallin allah says this is for my servant and my servant shall have what he ask for so here we see the importance of surah al fatiha now the beginning of surah al baqara baqara here means cow and he, he in this surah al baqara ayah number uh uh like before starting surah al baqara baqara means cow prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said recite this surah surah al baqara reciting is a blessing and leaving it is a cause of grief and magician cannot overcome on this so the surah al baqara starts with huruf e muqattar but surah al baqara of reciting is as a blessing and leaving it is a cause of uh, grief and magician cannot counter it abu huraira said that i heard prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying do not turn your houses into graves means you know graveyard shaitan runs away from the house of which surah al baqara is re- recited so there are two surahs which will shade on the day of judgment surah al baqara and surah al al imran and shaitan flee away from the home when surah al baqara is recited try to learn the recitation properly and try to recite it you don't need any peer or alim you have to recite yourself surah al baqara and this will be shared in the hereafter surah al baqara baqara means cow that incident will be mentioned in ayah number 61 62 alif lam mim this is huruf e muqattad and allah knows the meaning of huruf e muqattad uh, only allah can uh, know the meaning we don't know the meaning of huruf e muqattad and now zalikal kitabullah rayba fihi hudal lil muttaqin so allah says there is no doubt regarding this and allah has complete knowledge about it so zalikal kitabu la rayba fihi hudal lil muttaqin so allah has complete knowledge about it but this is a book about which there is no doubt it is a guidance for the people who are conscious of allah subhanahu wa taala who fear allah who are muttaqin who are those who are always conscious of allah who think about him they are here mention allazina yu'minuna bil ghaib those who believe in the unseen which is an action of the heart and what they do allazina yu'minuna bil ghaib wa yuqimuna salata so here they establish sala which is an action of the limbs wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun and they establish prayer which is an action of the limbs wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun and spend out of which we have provided for them this is the right of the creation so the muttaqin those who benefit from this book are those in whose uh, internal is allah's remember remembrance so they believe in allah 
The way they should believe, they fulfill the requirements of Iman and in their external state also, they practically exhibit that faith. So they properly establish Salah and they spend what they have on Allah's creation. They pray full regard to the rights of the Creator and the rights of the creation. Ayah number 4, Surah Al-Baqarah. And here in Ayah number 4, and those who believe in what has been revealed to you. And what was revealed before you and of the hereafter, they are certain. So the part of the taqwa and of the condition of guidance is that a person believes in everything that was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Everything that he uh, brought, everything that he taught in the form of Quran, also in the form of hikmah which is called sunnah or hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa anzal allahu alayka al-kitaba wal hikma surah al-nisa number 113 and Allah has revealed on you the book and the wisdom wa allamaka ma lam takun ta'lam and taught you what you did not know wa kana fadlullah alayka azima and the favor of Allah on you is ever great so therefore benefiting from the teaching of Prophet is to actually benefit from Allah's special favor. The person who gets to benefit from the teaching of Prophet has truly received Allah's favor. And remember, Prophet left both the Quran and Sunnah with his Ummah. He urged his Ummah to hold on to both in order to remain guided. Here, and the hereafter they are certain yakin conviction is to believe with certainty without any doubt yakin is the highest rank of knowledge it is a station which allows a person to see what the average eye does not see this is why for akhira the word iman is not used over here but yakin has been used when there is yakin only then do action changes Prophet ﷺ said, O oh people, truly there is no blessing that people are given in the world that is better than Yaqeen. And Afia, conviction and safety. So ask Allah for both. The person has Yaqeen. Then they have no doubt. They are absolutely sure. Faith is a reality to them. It is uh, their worldview. It is their conscious, subconscious. They know Allah is true. His word is true. His promise is true. The meeting with him is true. Jannah is true. Hellfire is true. Those are, uh, and our is true. And it is because of yakin that a person can surrender themselves to Allah. Trust in Allah. Depends upon Allah. Repents to Allah. Prophet Wasallam said, How excellent are five things whoever meets Allah while believing in them with the conviction will enter Jannah. Whoever believes in Allah, the last day, paradise, hell, resurrection, after death and the accounting. Those who have such characters, Allah says, Ula'ika, now here, who are successful? Ula'ika ala hudam mir rabbihim wa ula'ika humul muflihun. Those are upon right guidance from their Lord. Wa ula'ika humul muflihun and it is those who are successful. So those whose uh, external internal the relationship with people and all are sound this is the standard of hidayah guidance we ask allah for guidance in suratul fatiha and allah shows us over here what guidance looks like the conditions are given over here that if one fulfills this condition they meet this criteria then they are upon hidayah guidance if they if there is guidance then there is success so the key to success has been given over here in contrast for those people who denied so it is said indeed those people who believe and number six inna lazina kafaru sabaun alayhim a anzar tahum amlam tunzirhum la yuminun indeed those people who disbelieve it is all the same for them whether you warn them or do not warn them they will not believe meaning there is no faith no belief then warning does not help why because allah has set a seal upon them i number seven their hearts their hearing and over their vision is a veil for them is a great punishment when does this happen 
This happens when a person rejects the truth after knowing it. And secondly, when a person increases in sin. When sins are many, then hearts become sealed. May Allah protect us from this. Then a third category is mentioned that is those who are somewhere between Iman and Kufr. And they are hypocrites. I am number 8. And among mankind, there are some who say we believe in Allah and in the last day, while they believe not. And uh, and says that, and of the people are some who say, meaning with their mouth, we believe in Allah, the last day. But they are not believers in reality, subhanallah. They say with their mouths that they believe, but Allah does not accept their claim. Why? Because they are not truthful, their claim, and because their practical life does not reflect what they claim to believe in, both their speech and their action contradict Iman. They go against what they claim. They don't do what they say. And number nine, we are doing Surah Al-Baqarah, Juz 1. They think to deceive Allah and those who believe, but they deceive not accept themselves. Like, you know, people, those who are not believing, they are thinking like, you know, they are deceiving uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, they are deceiving themselves. Not Allah. Fi kulubihim maradun. Their heart has a disease. What disease? This is of hypocrisy. Or according to some other mufassirin, the desire of the love of this world. So Allah has increased their disease. Meaning their love and inclination for this world was increased. And for them is a painful punishment. Because they habitually used to lie. And uh, in following ayah we see. And it is said to them do not cause corruption in the land. Because the thing is that when words and action contradicts one another. When there is deception. When there is lie. Then this causes corruption. This causes problem. They say we are but reformers. Qalu innama nahnu muslihun. Meaning, we are actually trying to get along with everybody. They justify their sins. Like, you know, yani, they are just justifying. They justify their lies. They say, we are just trying to be in everyone's good book. So, uh, wherever they are in need to lie, uh, they do that. You know, simply they lie. They say, oh, because of this and that, you know, they justify. But the fact is that such lies cause more problems. They don't truly bring benefit, isn't it? Lies a lie. Allah says unquestionably it is they who are corruptors but they perceive it not. When it is said to them believe as people have believed meaning believe like the Sahaba they say should we believe as the foolish have believed again you know they say they are saying others as a foolish. They say, should we believe as a foolish have believed? In their eyes, the Sahaba are foolish. They, uh, they, uh, the truthful are naive. Unquestionably, it is they who are foolish, but they know it not. Because the person who are claiming uh, like others, uh, saying the bad things about others, they themselves are bad. You know, sometimes it happens like people talk bad about other people. What about uh, themselves? When somebody is talking ba bad about somebody in front of you, definitely they will uh, say bad about you one day in front of others. So bad is bad. Lie is a lie. Surah Bakra, Ayah number 14. When they meet those who believe, they say, we believe. But when they are alone with their evil ones, they say, indeed, we are with you. We were only mockers. So they, they are just saying, you know, oh no, we are just mocking. Subhanallah. Making fun of Islam, of Muslims, of people who follow Islam. This is a sign of hypocrisy. How can a person make fun of Islam when they say they believe? How can they laugh and mock at the ayahs of the Quran? What Allah has revealed in the Quran, the command that Allah has given, what Allah has decreed sacred. They think they know better so that they can criticize the religion of Allah. Such people are too, truly foolish. And Allah says, but Allah mocks them and prolongs them in their transgression while they wander blindly. Meaning Allah has given them the freedom to do what they want to do right now. They think what they are doing is good. They live in fool's paradise. They are completely oblivious to their errors. And on the day of judgment, they will be mocked at how their lights will be extinguished and they will be left in darknesses and alone and bewildered. And number 16, Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, those are the ones who have purchased errors. 
ulaika allazina ishtaru dalalata bil huda in exchange for the guidance their action has brought no profit no benefit ayah number 17 their example is that of one who kindled the fire meaning the first he believed they were like you know light but when it is illuminated what was around him allah took away their light left them in darkness so they could not see remember the light of the heart iman is in allah's hand this is why we should say allahumma ij'al fi qalbi nura o allah make light in my heart they did have light at the beginning but when they fear worldly loss because of deen when they saw the glitters of this world they left the deen for the dunya so the darknesses of their desire the darknesses of their doubts and disbelief took over and in the light of the faith was extinguished and so they wander in misguidance unable to find the way so allah says summun bukmun umyun fahum la yarjun they are deaf dumb and they will not return meaning they are unable to hear the words of guidance when they hear such words the sounds bounce back the words don't reach the heart they are unable to speak the truth they are unable to see to absorb the truth the signs are laid out across the earth but they fail to see them the verses of the quran are filled with truth and guidance but they do not benefit allah says so they will not return fahum la yarjiun meaning they will not return to the iman faith they will remain in hypocrisy aw ka sayyib min as-samai or there is a example is like a rain storm from the sky a heavy downpour within which is darkness as thunder and lightning and this is referring to the verses which are being revealed in which is light but also some risk things that are not always easy to do so what do the hypocrites do they put their fingers in their ears against the thunder claps uh, thunder claps in the dread of the death means so they avoid the hard things they avoid the hard things they avoid the commands that are difficult on their nerves they don't want to hear anything anymore they don't want to come to the guidance hidayah they feel it's too much wallahu muhitum bil kafirin but allah is encompassing of the disbelievers a person should think where will i escape from allah can we which sky which earth which shelter when angel of death will come there will be no escape no getting away then i have to stand before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so before that time comes it is necessary that i prepare for it ayah number 20 allah says yakadu albarq yakhtafu absarhum the lightning almost snatches away their sight every time it is light the away, away for them they walk therein but when darknesses come over them they stand still and if allah had willed they could have taken away their hearing their sight indeed allah is over all things competent but he has given them some time right now when there is a command that seems easy when thing seems easy hopeful they are willing to follow and follow the religion but when there is some difficulty they stop and allah has not fully taken the means you know of guidance away from them if he wanted he could uh, have taken away their uh, hearing their vision and remember that these are the means of guidance but he is still giving them chance if we are honest with ourselves we would admit that there are times when our words do not match our action when there is laziness in worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when love for world is intense so even umar radhiyallahu anhu would ask hudayfa adjuring him in the name of allah that tell me is my name among the name of hypocrites that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam inform you of and just like you know regarding the nifaq he is so scared about that hypocrisy the companions feared hypocrisy for themselves and here we are thinking of ourselves to be perfect sincere believer who are uh, safe from hypocrisy remember the person who feels secure from hypocrisy is the one who is truly a risk of hypocrisy 
the believer is afraid of any fog so we should keep praying we should keep asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allahumma matana bi asma'ina wa bisarina wa quwwatina ma ahyaytana wa ja'alhu warisi minna oh allah allow us to benefit from our hearing our vision our strength don't take them away uh, from us for long as as long as we live and make them outlive us meaning oh allah enable us to have this abilities the means of guidance until we die so we can be on guidance now allah addresses of, of all mankind uh, from ayah number 21 ya yuhan nasu abudu rabbakum O mankind, worship your Lord, devote yourself to Him, love Him the most, have reverence for Him. Who is He? He created you. You are here because of Him. You are uh, who you are because of Him. He also created those before you that you may become righteous. You may be safeguarded in the world against sin from falling in difficulty and the hereafter from falling in the hell. Who is your Lord? Recognize Him. He is the one who made you the earth, a bed and the sky. So here, Allah zee jala lakum ul arda firashon. He is the one who made you the earth, a bed and the sky is sealing and sent down from the sky rain and brought forth thereby fruits as provision for you. So do not attribute to Allah equals while you know. So here, فَلَا تَجْعَلُ لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادٌ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ then you know that he alone is doing all of this then he alone is worthy of your worship la ilaha illallah remember for ibadah guidance is necessary one needs to know what allah likes and what allah does not like and for that it is essential that one learns the quran so the authenticity of the quran is established one should not compromise on tawheed وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا And if you are in doubt about what that we have sent down upon our servant, then produce a surah. Like thereof, all call upon their witnesses, your helpers other than Allah, if you should be truthful. مِن دُونِ اللَّهَ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِخِينَ And if you don't, فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا فَاتَّقُ النَّارَ اللَّتِ so here if you are in doubt about which we have sent down our servant then produce a surah like this but if you do not you will never be able to because it is impossible for anyone to produce anything like quran then save yourself fear the fire fear the fire who whose fuel in men and stones prepare for the disbelievers so it shows that if the Quran is missing from person's life, if they do not have Quran in their life, the guidance, Hidayah, in their life, then outcome is very serious. On the other hand, ayah number 25, and give good news to those who believe and do righteous deeds. They will have gardens in Jannah, paradise beneath which rivers flow. Whenever they are provided with the provision of fruits, therefrom they will say, this is what we were provided with before. Meaning, they will be given similar, somewhat similar of, you know, food. But of course, the deliciousness will be different each time. And it is given to them in likeness meaning even though in the color and appearance they will look the same in reality they will be different they will have their in purified spouses you know that life is never ending it is eternal so prepare for that life but there are two conditions for that iman and amal faith and righteous action and remember that righteous action have four components first of all ilm knowledge one must do it with knowledge secondly niya the intention should also be good for the sake of allah third sabr do it with uh, patience sabr don't give up and quit too easily don't then finally ikhlas do it for allah and without any partners 
the book is the great quran and allah has made this quran for the servant it is allah's speech and it is also understandable to people if you think about it the speech the language of people especially those who are advanced in their knowledge is sometimes very hard to comprehend the more a person knows the more complicated their speech becomes but allah rabbul alamin speaks to people in a way they can understand this is why there are examples in the quran but when people fail to find fault in the quran they mock at the examples they mock at the contents of the quran ayah number 26 surah al baqarah so here in allah la yastahi now allah is giving an example so allah intends allah is not shy allah is not timid to present an example of a mosquito or what is smaller than it and those who have believed know that it is the truth from their lord so every detail of the quran is important to them but as for those who disbelieve they say what did they intend by this an example they don't understand because their hearts are covered allah misleads many there by guidance many there by his misleads not accept the defiantly disobedient so the reason for the misguidance is people own deviation it is their own fault allah says in surah as-saf ayah number 5 falam ma zaqu azaqa allah qulubahum when they deviated allah caused their hearts to be deviated the person who surrender before the command of allah allah gives them guidance hidayah but those who are fasikun who defiantly disobey who violate the boundaries set by allah and pursue their desire then such people are deprived of guidance here we are doing ayah number 27 allazina yanquduna ahdallahi they are those who break the covenant of allah after contracting it and severing which allah has ordered to be joined here severing the ties especially relationship and they cause corruption on the earth and it is those who are losers we learn like you know they, these people are the losers allah says they these are the people who are losers and here talking about Uh, the we learn earlier about muttaqin and muhtasin salihin here fasikin are mentioned those who break the promises they make with allah they have no regard for la ilaha illallah they take the name of allah they make promises in his name and swear oath in his name then don't fulfill them and the relationship that allah has commanded they should be joined they cut off them here you know remember when you are cutting the relationship those who sever the ties of kingship are deprived of allah's mercy and such people are khasirun they suffer loss in this world and the hereafter there are two things that increase when a person joins the ties of king, kingship they are life we want more life right and also the risk sustenance and everyone wants to live longer have more money keys to this is to be good to everyone's relatives whether your uh, relatives whether your husband's relative maternal patron it doesn't matter don't sever the uh, relationship allah won't uh, even uh, allow you to smell the jannah allah does not like so we have to do the reconciliation if somebody is you know heard or they are not talking in terms like uh, join the relationship don't let it go because the ramadan time is the best time because people heart is very tender at that time so join the relationship because we want to have the the good relationship because allah won't allow the entry in the jannah we want to go to jannah and we are scared of allah subhanahu wa taala we want good in this world and the hereafter when they do good to you also when they don't do good to you because remember that believer does not just reciprocate a believer is good mohsin he does good regardless how people treat him kaifa takfuruna billahi like how can you disbelieve how can you disbelieve in allah when you were lifeless where did you come from who put life in you he brought you to life then he will cause you to die meaning you are not in this world forever this life is short then he will bring you back to life and yes there is another life then to him you will be returned and there is no death so there are two deaths 
and two lives and this shows us that our life is not just in this world the real life is life of the hereafter so we must prepare for what is commanded like you know try to understand kaifa takfuruna billahi wa kuntum amwat you were dead before coming into the tummy of the mother fahiyakum and he make you born summa yumitukum and you you will die maut summa yuhikum again on the day of judgment you will be raised summa ilahi turjan you will be returned to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so allah make you die allah make you live it is the promise of allah allah will fulfill that who allazi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardi ayah number 29 it is who created for you of that which is on the earth then he directed himself to the heaven and made them seven heavens and he is knowing of all things sab as-samawatin وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ Allah has complete knowledge about it. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ Now the incident of Adam and Hawa al-Islam on ayah number 30. And this has been mentioned several places too. And mention O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم When your Lord said to the angels indeed I will make upon the earth a successive authority. They said will you place upon it one who causes corruption there and sheds blood. They were objecting. They were just expressing their concern and fear. While we declare your praise and sanctify you. So they are saying, وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّ بِهَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّ سُلَقْ قَالَ إِنِّي عَلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلُمُونَ And Allah said, indeed, I know that which you do not know. You do not know the reason, the wisdom behind the creation of human being. So he taught Adam al-Islam. So later on we see, وَأَلَّمَ آدَمَ أَسْمَا كُلَّهَا he taught Adam al-Islam the name of all of them. Allah gave knowledge to Adam al-Islam before standing him on the earth. Then he showed them to the angels and said, inform me of the names of this if you are truthful. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor upon human beings that Allah has given us knowledge of what we did not know. It is the knowledge that we was given before the foods of Jannah, it is the knowledge that was given to Adam al-Islam before a spouse and it is the knowledge which we, uh, with which Adam al-Islam was given preference over the angels. So ayah number 32, the angel said, says, Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana exalted are you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. Indeed it is you who is ever knowing the ever wise. So Allah said, O Adam, inform of their names. When he had informed them their names, he said, Did I not tell you that I know the unseen of the heaven and earth, and I know what you reveal and what you conceal? So Allah says, I know. And mention we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam. وَإِسْكُنَّا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِعَادَمَا فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيس أَبَا وَاسْتَكْبَرَ وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ And mention we said to angels prostrate before Adam so they prostrate except Iblis. He refused and was arrogant become disbeliever وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ And we said O Adam dwell you and your wife in Jannah وَقُلْنَا يَا دَمُ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ and we said, O Adam, dwell you and your wife in Jannah, eat there from in ease and abundance from wherever you will. But do not approach this tree, lest you be among the wrongdoers. But shaitan caused them to slip. But shaitan caused them to slip out of it. Slowly and gradually, he convinced them to eat the fruit. That was forbidden and removed them from the condition in which they had been. And we said, go down all of you as enemies to one another. Man is enemy to shaitan and shaitan is enemy to man. And you will have upon the earth a place of settlement and provision of a time. وَلَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرًّا وَمَتَعُنْ إِلَهِينَ Means Allah created Adam, human beings for earth and in Jannah. There was a test to show that if a person disobeys their Rabb, then they cannot have Jannah. In order to be in Jannah, one has to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Adam al-Islam received from his Lord some words. فَتَلَّقَ آدَمُ بِرَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ He accepted 
some uh, uh, repentance indeed it is he who is accepting the repentance of merciful because allah is in who was tawwabur rahim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave adam al islam that realization to repent then allah taught adam al islam the word of repentance then accepted the repentance of adam al islam subhanallah mercy upon mercy allah is pleased with the repentance of his servant allah reward his servant then his servant repents and this is good news but, um, yeah, like you know that the person who repents then allah accepts their repentance wayatubu allah ala man taba so he should also repent to allah from all our sins we said go down kul nahbitu minha jamia we said go down from it all of you when guidance come to you from me whoever follows my guidance there will be no fear concerning them nor will they grieve like fala qawfun alaihim wala hum yahzanun ayah number 39 والذين كفروا وكذبوا بآياتنا and those who disbelieve and deny our sign those will be the companions of the fire they will abide therein eternally so after addressing والذين كفروا after addressing all mankind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses bani israel now especially remember this is one of the first surah to be revealed in madina and at that time besides the arab there there were three tribes of bani israel lived in madina try to understand that and in bani israel they were uh, like descendants of yaqub al islam prophet uh, prophets musa al islam isa al islam and many other prophets were sent to them and several scriptures were also given to them and prophet was also sent to them so they are address over here ya bani israel from the ayah number 40 onwards o children of israel remember my favor uskuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum remember my favor which i have bestowed upon you the many religious and holy blessings that i have given to you specifically and fulfill my covenant upon you that i fulfill your covenant wa ufu wa aufu bi ahdi ufi bi ahdikum wa iyaya farhabuni so when you obey me i will make you enter jannah be afraid of only me this is the key thing if we afraid only of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa aminu bima anzaltu and believe in what i have sent down confirming that which is already with you and be not the first to be disbelieve in it and do not exchange my signs for a small petty price and fear only me so here in ayah number 41 you see everybody know that bani israel were the people of scripture they were supposed to be the people of knowledge religious folks so everyone would ask them about prophets but they would say unclear things about him leaving people in doubt right and confusing so they are advise again that over here let the truth be known do not conceal it do not uh, sell my religion for a petty worldly price ayah number 42 to 44 here and do not mix the truth with false do not conceal the truth while you know wala talbisul haqqa bil batil wa taktumun al haqqa wa antum ta'lamun and establish prayer and give zakat wa qimu as salata wa atu az zakat wa arkau ma ar rakin and the most important act of worship that is mentioned again now here is as sala and do you order righteousness righteousness of the people and forget yourself while you recite the scripture then will you not reason your words action should not be in contradiction like you know that is hypocrisy but here a number 45 is very important was tainu bi sabri wa salam so seek help through patience and prayer when it is difficult to seek allah's help and indeed it is difficult except for those who are humbly submissive to allah illa alal khashiin so those people who are humble before allah who willingly to surrender to allah alone they pray salah happily remember salah is a test it is a scale that will show you who you really are what the level of faith you have so check yourself what is the state of your heart when the adam al islam uh, sorry when azan is made when the time of salah enters how do you view the uh, you know place of prayer is it garden or is it mall or is it you are going traveling flight remember sabr and salah they actually create ease in life because allah says seek help through patience and prayer all of the prophets 
of Allah would seek ease through sabr and prayer and this was the way of the righteous people Salim remember when Surah was held captives by the king then uh, this Sara uh, al-Islam was held by captives by the king and he intended to harm her she began praying and Ibrahim al-Islam also began praying at that same time Allah delivered her from the tyrant Sa uh, Salah brings Allah's mercy and protection. So who are people who actually like Salah, who don't find it difficult? Those who are khashin. So have that khushu of Allah. Don't fear of people. Allah zina yazun nuna inna mulahu rabbihim. Those who are certain that they will meet their Lord and they will return to him. They have yakin. Again it is said, I number 47, O children of Israel, remember my favor. Ya Bani Israel, uzkuru ni'mati yallati. My favor that I have bestowed upon you, that I have preferred you over the worlds. And fear a day when no soul will suffice for another soul. Not at all. And nor will intercession be accepted from it. Nor will be compensation be taken from it. Nor will they be aided. No one will help them. Yani, so you have to have your good deeds. So you have to try. I number 49. We call when we saved you from your forefathers, from the people of Pharaoh who afflicted you with the worst torment, slaughtering your newborn sons and keeping your females alive. And in it was a great trial from your Lord. And recall when we parted the sea, but is farakhna, and we parted the sea for you and saved you, and we drowned the people of Pharaoh while you were looking on. So this was necessary for Bani Israel to see the armies of uh, Pharaoh drowning because if they didn't see that, they wouldn't have closure. They would have constantly live in the fear. And ayah number 51, and recall when we made an appointment with Musa for 49, then you took worship the calf after him while you were wrong towards then we forgave you after that so perhaps you would be grateful and recall when we gave Musa the scripture and criterion that helps you would be guided so the book of Allah is for guidance and recall when Musa said to his people oh my people indeed you have wronged yourself by your taking of the call for worship imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescued them they watched their enemy drown, but instead of showing gratitude to Allah, they began worshipping the calf. So Musa Islam said to them, so repent to your creator and kill yourself, kill one another. This is best for all you in the sight of your creator. Punishment was severe for this. Then he accepted your repentance. Indeed, he is accepting repentance and merciful. I am number 55. Recall when you said, O Musa, we will never believe you until we see Allah outright. So the thunderbolt took you while you were looking on. <coughs> so one demand after another. Ayah number 56. Then he revived you after your death. That perhaps you would be grateful. And we shaded you with the clouds and sent down to your man and uh, quails, man and salva, saying, eat from the good things with which we have provided you. And they wronged us not, but they were only wronging themselves. And recall, we said, enter the city, eat from it, wherever you in, ease, abundance, enter the gate, bowing humbly and say, hittatun, which means, astaghfirullah, oh Allah relieve us our burden we will then forgive your sins for you and we will increase the doer of good in goodness and reward i number 59 and those who wrong change those words to a statement other than which had been said to them so instead of saying hittatun they said hintatun which means wheat grain so they basically mocked so we sent down upon those who wronged the punishment from the sky because they were defiantly disobeying meaning they uh, there was nothing else to do than to punish such people this is a punishment which they brought upon themselves i number 60 and recall when musa al islam here when musa al islam prayed for water for his people so he said strike with your stamp the stone and they were gushed forth from it 12 springs 
and every people know its watering place. Eat and drink from the provision of Allah and do not commit abuse on the earth spreading the corruption. So here in this following ayah and ayah number 61 and recall when you said O oh Musa we can never endure one kind of food. Now they want more different variety of the uh, food you know. We can't eat the same food every day. So call upon your Lord for us and from the earth we want green herbs, cucumber and uh, garlic, lentil, onions meaning we want uh, the earth grows you know Musa al-Islam said would you exchange what is better for what is le less so he said do you want to exchange Qala atastabdiluna allazi huwa adna billazi huwa khair so you want to give up man and salwa heavenly food for earthly food is is that is the case then uh, go into any settlement and indeed you will have what you have asked so you can go and get into yourself then they were covered with the humiliation and the poverty this people and you know poverty returned with the anger from Allah upon them that was because they repeatedly disbelieved in the signs of Allah, killed the prophets without right. That was because they disobeyed and were habitually transgression. Why did wrath? Because, you know, befall these people because of this reason, especially their habitual transgression, they are breaking the limits set by Allah, they are crossing the boundaries shamelessly in pursuing their desire. We see that when uh, the chosen people who were favored with many blessings, when they were punished because of their transgression and denial, what does that mean? Why is this being mentioned over here? so that we take a lesson we are very proud of the fact that we are ummat muhammad and yes this pride is fitting we must be grateful to allah for this but we also have to watch ourselves remember on the day of judgment some people will come to prophet but they will be removed far away from him they will not even get to drink from the house how will they get his intercession so we have to follow prophet Islam in true sense we have to have taqwa and remember that taqwa includes saving yourself from sin and transgression and that is what will ultimately save a person from punishment and to uh, in like where the limits of allah come we have to stop because remember that one sin one violation leads to another then a person gets stuck in that quick stand and they are worthy of Allah's wrath and this is what happened with Bani Israel. Now a general invitation is given ayah number 62. Allah says Inna lazina amanu wal lazina hadu wal nasara wa sabi'ina Indeed those who believe and those who were Jews, Christians, Sabians meaning before Prophet and those among them who believed in Allah last day and did the righteousness will have their reward with their Lord and no fear will they be concerning nor will they grieve. So we see that Iman with righteous deeds this is what saves a person from fear and grief. Life of obedience to Allah is mere affiliation to a group. It's not enough. Simply identifying with a certain group is not sufficient. There must be Iman, faith and righteous action. Salih action is must. And recall when we took your covenant, O children of Israel, we raised over you a mount saying taken, take what we have given you with the determination. And remember, isn't it that perhaps you may become righteous, you may be saved. We have given the same command that we hold on to this book firmly because when a person follow this book, only then too they have the taqwa then you turn away after that if not for the favor of Allah upon you and his mercy you would have been among the losers so I number 64 then you turn away after that so if it had not been for the grace of Allah upon you and his mercy you would have been among the losers so here in 64 you would have turned away after that uh, if not for the favor of Allah upon you and his mercy, you would have been among the losers. So it's Allah's mercy. He saved them and he gave them another chance. And the fact is that Allah keep giving us more and more chances. So here Allah is giving more chances 
and different tests we experience in our life whether it's sickness or some financial problem why is it so why do these difficulties come to draw our attention to allah so that we turn to him we incline towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we run towards him but we get lost into the trials don't connect with allah and there is a warning over here every difficulty what you face think did this difficulty bring me closer to allah or take me farther from him fortunate is the person who used the time to draw near to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now talks about the sabd and you had already know about those who transgressed among you concerning the sabd remember they were forbidden from fishing on saturday so they would put the nets on friday and remove them on sunday and they would say oh we didn't catch the fish the fish come themselves what are you trying to fool allah are you trying to outspot him so we said to them be apes despise you know they are making it excuse and doing the things and we made it a deterrent punishment for those who were present and those who succeed them and a lesson for those who fear allah so what is the lesson for muttaqin that no one can deceive allah deception is the way of hypocrisy so here ayah number 67 and recall when musa said to his people indeed allah commands you to slaughter a cow they said do you uh, take us in ridicule so he was giving this and they are saying qala a'udhu billahi an akuna minal jahilin he said i seek refuge in allah from being among the ignorant a'udhu billah remember that a person of knowledge a person of intelligence does not make fun of others do not mock at others because making fun of others is a sign of jahiliya so those who are ignorant making fun of people appearance the way the they talk or error they make in their speech this is not good this is not a good akhlaq this is jahalat so musa al islam said a'udhu billahi an akuna min al jahilin may allah protect me from ridiculing my people by using allah's name by using allah's command so allah tested bani israel over here you see they had among the people of pharaoh for a very long time they used to worship multiple gods so they were in the love with cow because the fact is that you are surrounding impact uh, so in order to purify their iman faith allah subhanahu wa taala tested tested them over and over so test are for the purpose of purification faith allah subhanahu wa taala commanded them to slaughter a cow out of all the things to purify their faith they would become completely submissive to allah but they found this command very hard so they said you are joking you cannot be serious they stalled they uh, they asked many question because they love they love cow as a god ayah number 68 they said call upon your lord to make clear to us what it is musa said allah says it is a cow which is neither old nor virgin but median between them so what do you are commanded meaning just do it don't delay so musa they are asking too many questions the fact is that righteous servants of allah do not delay in obeying allah the angels are prompt in obeying allah the sahaba were also very prompt in obeying uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a man said i saw a man whose opinion was accepted by the people and whatever he said they submitted to him so i ask who is this man they said this is messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so let us check ourselves whose uh, footsteps are we on those of the sahaba or bani israel we have to check ourselves i number 69 they said call upon your lord to show us that what is its color he said uh, he says it's yellow cow bright in color pleasing to the observer they are still not satisfied you understand they are asking one question after another so they said call upon your lord to make it clear to what it is indeed all cows look like to us so they are still saying oh we are confused indeed insha allah there's a good thing they said but inna insha allah la muhtadun and finally they said insha allah because of that they were able to find the cow musa al islam did not get uh, you know exacerbated by their questions he didn't uh, tell them to go away musa al islam then later on said he says it is a cow neither trained to plow the earth not to irrigate the field one free from fall with no spots upon it they said now you have come with the truth they, when they ran out of question they said oh finally it's clear so they slaughter it but they could hardly do it you know it was very difficult to them to find a cow like that musa al islam brought the truth the uh, first time but it because they did not want to follow it didn't appear to be clear to them so they kept asking question until they ran out of question and things became very hard for them they did not want to slaughter the cow that is the 
problem because they thought that something terrible would happen there would be a source of bad luck but the exact opposite happened the slaughtering of the cow obeying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command actually brought ease in their situation because at the same time someone had murdered and people were being accused so in chows that had happened and allah witness and you know prove it and they were thinking oh because they they you know, think a cow was a sacred and they don't want to you know sacrifice it allah says recall when slew a man and disputed over it but allah was to bring about what you were concealing so we said strike the slain man with a part of it then you know finally meaning with the part of the cow when the deceased was struck with the part of the cow he spoke the name of the murderer this was a miracle they were shown in the time of musa alaihissalam thus does allah bring the dead to life he shows you his signs and you mind reason what was the lesson the lesson that a person should leave superstition leave those fears and prevent them from obeying allah so what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded without any fear and this is how you will get ease in your life isn't it i number 74 sum summa qasad qulubukum min ba'di zalika allah says then your hearts become hardened after that being like stones or even harder for intent for indeed they are stones from which rivers burst forth there are some of them that split open water comes out there are some of them that falls down for the fear of allah, allah is not unaware of what you do so this is some summa qasad qulubukum min ba'di zalika fa hiya al-hijara so here you know their hearts become so hard here three kinds of stones are mentioned like you know that presents three kinds of people first stone through which rivers gush forth and this in place where a lot of water has gathered and spring such a gush out because the water cannot stay contained anymore so the rocks the stones they burst forth they break away giving away to the water and some people are like that the knowledge the goodness the desire to be good the love for the religion it keeps gathering increasing and then comes a time when it gush out uh, like river so many among creation benefits from the good they produce the second type of people who are such that their good does not come out immediately it is inside deep inside but a major incident like a difficult trial caused them to crack hurts you know it has a huge impact on them so some water trickles out and some people are like that that they keep absorbing the good but it doesn't come out at first but when something causes them to crack a hardship then good comes out finally the third type rocks that fall from the fear of allah because of an earthquake some landsliding some gravitational pull rocks that falls down for some people appear to be stubborn like rocks but when they develop the fear of allah they also bend they also repent from their sins so we see here the stones rocks they can break good can come forth from something that is so dry so hard apparently they can also be source of benefit so don't cancel people don't be judgmental about people it is possible that some individual appear to be stubborn very very hard to deal but day comes that they become a source of much khair they break they crack so much good comes out of them some people are like that they appear to be stones yet you yani they try to communicate in a different way but there is no response but then something in their life causes them to surrender before allah and the good that was hidden deep comes out so never despair never despair but we see in this ayah allah says about bani israel that your hearts become hardened than stone some people are different so we should ask allah to keep our hearts soft we continue to benefit the words of allah and allah protect us from the evil of our souls ibn al qayyim rahmatullah alayhi said that there are five things that corrupt the heart number 1 f- mixing frequently with the people socializing excessively not having alone time with allah subhanahu wa taala with oneself secondly following the desire meaning doing only that which pleases nafs thirdly loving someone more than loving allah it can be anyone spouse children anyone fourthly excessive sleep sleeping 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 and number 5 excessive consumption of food always thinking about food eating this thing that thing you know so when the heart is corrupt then nothing good 
has impact on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed the believers saying that. So so you covered, do you hope, oh believers, they would believe for you? So you uh, really think Bani Israel will believe? So here, while the party of them used to hear the words of Allah, then distort the Torah after they had understand, while they were knowing how hard were their heart, they refused to change themselves. They tried to change the words of Allah. That's how they were. And when they meet those who believe, they say, we have believed. When they are alone with another, they say, do you think to them about what Allah has revealed to you? So they can argue with you about it before your Lord. Then will you not reason? But they do not know what Allah knows, what they conceal and what they declare. Ayah number 78. And among them are unlettered one. So among them were men whom Ummi Yuna who do not know the book, who do not know the scripture, except the wishing thinking. Or they only know how to read the book without understanding its meaning. But they are only assuming. So in ayah number 79, so woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands and then say, this is from Allah, in order to exchange it for a small price, petty price. Woe to them for what their hands have written and woe to them for what they earn. In ayah number 80, Surah Al-Baqarah, وَقَالُوا لَن تَمَسَّنَ النَّارُ And they say, never will fire touch us except for a few days. This is the corruption of their belief. Say, have you taken a covenant with Allah? For Allah will never break his covenant. Or do you say about Allah that which you do not know? Bala man kasaba sayyatan. Ah, number 81. So here, yes, whoever earns evil and his evil, his sin has encompassed him. Meaning, it is surrounded by his sin. Not leaving it, not coming out of it. They, those are the companions of the fire. They will abide therein eternally. Rabbi ibn Qusayim said, this is the person who commits sins and dies in the state in that state without repentance remember little sins that are many are enough to destroy a person and who knows what if a person is not even able to repent for those sins this is why a person should remain fearful of allah and seek forgiveness of allah throughout the day Oh allah forgive me all of my sins i number 82 and recall and but they who believe and do righteous deeds those are the companions ashabun jannah companions of jannah paradise and they will abide therein eternally whom fiha khalidun and recall when we took the covenant from children of israel do not worship except allah subhanallah ta'ala and here talking about the covenant and in this covenant Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took with Bani Israel. We took a covenant from children of Israel. Do not worship except Allah and to parents do good and to relatives orphans and needy and speak to people good and establish prayer and give zakat. But then you turn away except a few of you were refusing. So this is a is Akhazna Misaka Bani Israel La Tabuduna illallah. First of all, worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A covenant was taken from Bani Israel. But why we are being told about it? So that we know that these important things to do. First of all, like la ta'abudu illallah. So worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then ihsan with parents. Wabil walidayna ihsana. So then Ihsan with parents because after Allah the greatest right is of the parents and remember Ihsan is not just a reciprocation that not only when they speak nicely to you, you speak nicely in return. If they yell at you, you tell my back no Ihsan is to do good even in return for the bad. So regardless of what parents do to you, say to you how they are to you you must be good to them this is allah's command and then ihsan not just towards parents but extend this to other relatives too wazil qurba wal yatama and then what is the minimum level of ihsan that doesn't cost anything waqulu lin nasi husna speak to people good words kindly decently meaning if you cannot give 
them anything at least speak to them nicely this is the bare minimum here talking about so uh, doing good to them so ihsan is with action and ihsan is also with the speech like you know kalimatu tayyibatu sadaqa a good word is charity spreading salam and speaking kindly are deeds that bring about forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are among mauji badil maghfira so say salam to everyone speak good in a way that is good make sure that your words are truthful necessary respectful respectful courteous free of arrogance free of boastfulness free of rudeness and other ills make your kalam husna me allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to speak good to say what is good in a way that is good and then they were told to perform salah and give zakah because these are also very important along with the good akhlaq it's not either or it is both this is complete thing do we not know that these are important things we all do but reading it today is a way of reminding ourselves because we are human and we forget prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam revived the quran with jibril alaihi wasallam every ramadan why because reviewing the quran allows you to remember what you know recall what you have forgotten increase in your iman and to have the motivation to do good but is aqazna misaqakum so again the covenant of misaq and recall we took your covenant saying do not shed each other bloods each other blood or evict one another from your homes then your knowledge uh, this while you were witnessing then you are those same one who are killing one another evicting party of your people from their home cooperating against them in sin and aggression and if they come to you as a captive you ransom them and then you remember you folk means although the eviction was forbidden to you in the first place so do you believe in the part of the scripture and disbelieve in the part all like you know this was not allowed for the bani israel nor is allowed for us so th- that we just select from the religion that we like and we leave what we don't like no then what is the recompense for those who do uh, that among you accept uh, disgrace in the worldly life when a person only takes from the religion what they like and leave the rest then this is something that brings about humiliation and on the day of resurrection they will be sent back to the severest of punishment and each time they try to come out they will be sent back and allah is not unaware of what you do so remember that iman requires from us that we surrender to our lord fully and completely so here the following aya ulaika allazina ashtaru those are the ones who uh, bought the life of this world in exchange for the hereafter so the punishment will not be lightened for them nor will they be aided because these are the people they ishtaru hayat ad dunya bil akhirah so the the life of the world in exchange for the era hereafter and we did certainly give musa torah and followed up after with the messenger and we gave isa the son of maryam clear proof and supported him with the pure spirit meaning jibril but it is it is not that every time a messenger came to your children of israel with what your souls did not desire you were arrogant and party of messengers you denied and another party you killed meaning if someone told you what was right what was wrong you didn't want to hear them and this is the height of arrogance and this is something that we need to reflect over also because the moment sometimes sir uh, someone tell us what is right or what is wrong we tell them to mind their own business isn't it we don't allow uh, this anymore this was the behavior of bani israel وَقَالُوا خُلُوبُنَا قُلْفُ Here they said our hearts are wrapped meaning we are full of knowledge we don't need to know but in fact Allah has cursed them for their disbelief when a person does not wish to learn anymore does not wish to be reminded then this is a sign of danger so little is that they believe and when they come to them a book from allah confirming that which was them although before they used to pray for victory against those who disbelieved they were waiting for the final messenger but then when they came to them 
that which they recognize they disbelieve in it why because prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not from among them he was an arab so the curse of allah will upon the disbelievers and how wretched is that for which they sold themselves and that they would disbelieve in what allah has revealed because of their outrage that allah would send down his favor upon whom he wills from among his servant so the real problem was actually jealousy that why this messenger come from arabs why not from us so they return having earned uh, upon wrath for such believers for such disbelievers is a humiliating punishment walil kafirina azaban muhin and when it is said to them wa iza qila lahum amanu when it is said to them believe in what allah has uh, revealed aminu they say we believe in only what was revealed to us and they disbelieve in what uh, came after it while it is the truth confirming that which is with them meaning the quran confirms torah it does not reject it but they reject quran say why did you kill the prophets of allah before if you are indeed believer so if you claim to be a believer then why did you kill them if you claim to be a believer in your book then why did you kill the every prophet who reminded you to follow the book and musa had certainly brought you clear proofs and then you took the calf in worship after that while you were wrong to us imagine the prophets of allah was among them yet they worship the calf how shocking is that wa is akhazna misaqakum and in this again the misaq and recall when we took your covenant wa rafana fawqakum at-tur and we raised over you the mount saying khuzu ma atainakum bi quwwah take what we have given you with determination and wasmau and listen they said instead samaina wa asaina so we hear and we disobey we are not going to listen we are not going to compile we choose to do differently why why they say this wa ushribu fi qulubihim al-ijla bi kufrihim and their hearts absorb the worship of calf because of their disbelief this shows us that when a person knowingly chooses to disobey allah then they get caught in some other fitna in the extreme love of something else so much so that they forgot themselves and they also forgot allah see how wretched is that which you faith enjoins upon you if you should be believer meaning you claim to be believer is this a belief say prophet if some of the hereafter with allah is for you alone and not other people then wish for that if you should be truthful so here fatamanna wal mauta in kuntum sadiqin you see just like us bani israel believe the janna was reserved for them no matter what they did you see we should have hope and we should have yakin that yes the one who says la ilaha illallah ultimately they will enter jannah but with that hope there should also be fear we should be hopeful of allah's mercy and forgiveness but we should also fear his disapproval because think about it how many sins did adam al islam commit because of which he was removed from jannah it was just one bite only one violation and because of how many crimes was iblis removed from allah's mercy it began with just one rejection one refusal and we learn in hadith that a person utters one word and he doesn't even think much of it but because of that one word he falls in hell for 70000 years we should not despair of allah's mercy but we should also not be blind to our reality we should remain fearful of allah and remember this is only in allah's hand it is up to him he can forgive whom he wants and he can punish whoever he wants so he sh- we should keep seeking forgiveness from allah that ya allah forgive us for what we have done knowingly and forgive us what we have done unknowingly and following ayah 
and they will never wish for death ever because of what their hands have put forth meaning they know exactly where they stand and allah know allah is knowing of the wrong doers and you will surely find them in following aya like they you will find them the most greedy of the people for life even more than those who associate others with allah meaning the mushrikeen are not even as greedy for the life as uh, these people are one of them wishes that he could be granted life for thousand years but it would not remove him in the least from coming punishment that he should be granted long life and a life seeing of what they do meaning a long life does not save one from their final outcome a delay does not mean avoidance ultimately all of us ha have to return there is no second thought about it we have to go back to allah and say whoever is an enemy to jibril it is none but he who has brought the quran down upon your heart o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by the permission of allah confirming that which was before it and as guidance and good tidings for the believers you see bani israel they asked prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that who is it brings you revelation he told them it is jibril they said oh but we don't like him because jibril used to bring punishment so allah subhanahu wa taala says over here fa innahu nazzalahu ala qalbika bi iznillah jibril does not bring any revelation of any azab without the permission or command of allah and then we see in this ayah that uh, what jibril brings revelation the quran it is huda wa bushra lil mu'minin it is the guidance and good news for those who believe subhanallah the quran gives instruction it brings you guidance it shows you the way it also bring good news it also gives hopes and encouragement man kana aduwu lillahi whoever is an enemy to allah and his angels and his messenger and jibril and mikail then indeed allah is an enemy to the disbelievers and we have certainly revealed to you the verses which are clear proofs and no one would deny then accept the divinely disobedient it's not true that every time they took a covenant a party of them threw it away meaning every time they made promise with allah they broke it but in fact most of them do not believe i number 101 and when a messenger from allah came to them confirming that which was with them a party of those who had been given to scripture uh, threw the scripture of allah behind their backs as if they did not even know so as if they had no idea about what the scripture said remember throwing the book of allah behind the back means that a person gives more importance to other things instead of the book book of allah they would rather recite read study something else they would rather spend time with something else it is not wrong to read other things it is okay but if a person does not give importance to the quran at all they prefer other books other speech other books are over the quran then this is a problem and this is something that we all need to reflect over we all need to check ourselves that how much of our time is spent with quran and specially reflecting on quran because remember reciting the quran is good memorizing quran is excellent but the purpose of quran is not fulfilled by just reading and memorizing it the quran is supposed to be understood it is supposed to be followed it is supposed to be remove darknesses from our life so understanding the quran is necessary for all of us and it's not enough to just read the translation once or twice revision is important study is important and person must continue to reflect on it sufyan ibn uwaina said the people have decorated the quran with silk covers they have decorated with gold and silver but they fail to act upon it and this is like as if throwing it behind their backs meaning they have made the book very expensive very beautiful but they don't actually fulfill its purpose so bani israel abandoned the book of allah they threw it behind their back as if uh, did not exit it is not exit in their lives it had no place in their life so what is it that they turn what is it that they fill in their uh, time with a number 102 this is important surah al baqarah a number 102 here talk about uh, suleiman al islam and wattaba umma tutlu shayatini 
and they followed instead what the devils had recited during the reign of suleiman al islam it was not suleiman who disbelieved but the devil disbelieved what was the disbelief what was that kufr it was the teaching people magic when people leave the quran uh, then what is that they pursue it is the things like so instead of the book of allah they followed what the devils recited they taught people magic and what was revealed to the two angels at the pavilion that is harut and marut but the two angels did not teach anyone unless they said we are trial so do not disbelieve by practicing magic yet they learn them by which they cause separation between a man and his wife and you see this disease has become so prevalent today so many people suffer because of magic families are destroyed people's health people's wealth their peace of mind it's ruined why what's the reason why do people resort to magic jealousy that they are not happy with the blessing that other people have and this jealousy remember it does it goes against iman a muttaqi is a person whose heart is clean a muttaqi feels pain of heart you know enduring difficulty that is perfectly fine you are allowed to feel hurt you are allowed to feel pain but muttaqi does not keep resentment jealousy in their heart for others and remember that every time you feel some pain in your heart because of some old wounds even because certain things they trigger old wounds right they trigger that pain and every single time that the person turns to allah then there is reward ajr and this reward in that pain but the believer does not bear jealousy and the jealousy does not lead him to cause harm to others to resort to lowly ways such as doing magic on others so but they do not harm anyone through it except by permission of allah illa bismillah and the people learn that harms then does not benefit them but the children of israel certainly know that whoever purchases it would not have it in the hereafter any shape and wretched is the gain for which they sold themselves if they know only so in this aya we see that magic has its effects but only with the permission of allah so instead of being afraid of magic and fearing that someone might do magic on us or they have uh, like done magic on us but what we have to think uh, like instead of living this constant fear we need to turn to allah subhanahu wa taala for protection you see when it is cold outside you protect yourself from wearing warm clothes turning the heat on you make arrangements so just like that when you sense the jealousy of the people when you fear the evil of shaitan then regularly read duas for protection and remember that zikr of allah is actually a fortress it's a protection you are safe because the zikr of allah and because of the zikr of allah nothing can harm you so be confident and the following aya walau annahum amanu so here allah says walau annahum amanu wattaqu la masubatum min indillah khairul law kanu ya'lamun and if they had believe and fear allah instead of practicing magic then reward from allah would have been far better if only they know now again ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu o you who believe do not say ra'ina meaning to allah's messenger but instead say unzurna and listen attentively and for the disbeliever is a painful punishment you see the sahaba over here are taught the etiquettes of gathering that when you are sitting in the company of prophet and you wish for um, for him to uh, repeat something for you then do not say raina use a word use a word like you know the word raina was actually misused by the people of book they would say prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a raina instead of raina they would mispronounce it why because raina means our shepherd so they would say that in order to make fun of him and their inner animosity would come out like this 
it would surface like this in a cheap pace. So people who behave like this, there are no need to waste your time arguing with them. Simply change your ways. And there are certain people who like to tease you, who like to belittle you, who like to shame you or pick fights with you on every little thing. So don't waste your time fighting them. Simply avoid conflict. What a beautiful lesson we have been taught over here. Neither those who disbelieve uh, from people of the scripture nor the polity theirs was that any good should be sent down to you from your Lord. But Allah selects for his mercy whom he wills and Allah is the possessor of great bounty. Like we do not abrogate a verse or cause to be forgotten except that we bring forth one that is better than it or similar to it. Alam ta'alam anna Allah la kulli shaykhadi. Do you not know that Allah is over all things competent? In the following ayah, uh, uh, it says Do you uh, not know uh, that to Allah belongs the dominion of the heaven and earth that you have not besides Allah mean and protector or helper so do you O oh believers instead intend to ask your messenger as Musa was asked before. So are you going to treat your uh, prophet the way Bani Israel treated theirs? So whoever exchanged their faith for disbelief has certainly strayed from the soundness of the way. And here in this we learn many of the people of scripture wish they could turn you back to disbelief after you have believed why out of envy from themselves even after the truth has become clear to them so pardon and overlook them until allah delivers his com command how beautiful indeed allah is over all things competent competent establish prayer and give zakat that that's it. No, wama tu kadimu li an fusikum min khairun min khairin tajiduhu in the Allah. And whatever good you put forward for yourself, and you will find it with Allah. Meaning, every little and big deed you do for the sake of Allah, you will find it with Him. Means, indeed, Allah, what you do is seen. You see, sometimes we think that as long as we have prayed our salah, we have given our zakat, that's enough then there is nothing else that we need to do we think that's the maximum good we can do then we are free to do whatever we want we can indulge in the world or pursue our desire and yes yani as long as it is permissible it's fine but remember that there is no limit to the good you can go on and on the door to good is vast any good deed you do, big or small, whether it's internal or external, in the heart or in the body, private or public, in word or in action, any deed that Allah loves and approves of, then we should be eager to do it. The believer is eager of khair. Sometimes we look at other people and we say, oh, they're not doing that much. Uh, why should I bother? No, our example should be Sabikun, those who are ahead of us, not those who are lingering behind. Then later on, and they say, none will enter Jannah. And they say, none will enter Jannah except one who is Jew or according to Christian, a Christian. Allah said, that is merely their wishful thinking. They assume that they are upon the truth. They are the ones who are arguing. Though, though these are, uh, are the ones who are going to Jan uh, Jannah. Say, produce your proof if you should be truthful. So here, So this problem is also common in many Muslims. There are so many sectarian division, and this labels that we give one another to ourselves, and then we declare people to be, you know, Jahannam. Uh, we start giving the titles behalf of on our knowledge we are nobody to because allah knows if we know clearly their aqidah is incorrect we should correct that we should propagate the deen in a nice manner allah says yes on the contrary who is it that will be saved whoever submit his face in his uh, face in islam to allah
so he completely submitting to allah man aslama wajhahu lillahi so here wa huwa muhsin while being a doer of good falahu ajru in the rabbihi while being doer of good and he will have his reward with his lord wala khawfun alaihim wala hum yahzanun and no fear there be concerning nor they will grieve it will be such people who will be free of worries who will be free of fears so what is the lesson in this ayah that we must have ikhlas we must have the sincerity towards allah subhanahu wa taala we must have ihsan to have the ihsan we should be mohsin doing good whether somebody is doing good or bad doesn't matter still we do good we must be excellent do the best that we can in worshiping and obeying allah and also treating other people in a good manner and then here mention the jews says the christians have nothing true to stand on and the christians says the jews have nothing to stand on although they both recite the same scripture thus polytheists speak the same as their words but allah will judge between them on the day of resurrection concerning that over which they used to differ so it is important that instead of basing our lives on whims and assumption we should learn what allah really want us to do waban azlama and who are more unjust than those who prevent the name of allah from being mentioned in his mosque they prevent the name of allah from being mentioned in his mosque means and strive toward their destruction they cause disturbance in the masjid blood shed noise fighting fasad all of these are serious crimes it is not allowed for them to enter them accept in fear for them in this world is disgrace why because they turn their places of worship into crime scenes so for them is disgrace in the world and they will have in here in here after great punishment remember causing fasad disturbing the peace uh, peace of any place is wrong but disturbing the peace of the masjid is worst and remember that masjid is the home of allah it should be used to elevate his name and we should be careful refrain from doing things that cause people to run away from masjid and also we say over here that such people for them is humiliation in the world and a great punishment in the hereafter wal hum fil akhirati azabun azim so the so we should ask allah to protect us from disgrace in this world and the punishment in the hereafter allahumma ahsin aqibatana fil umuri kulliha wa ajirna min khizyu dunya wa azab al akhira ayah number 115 walillahi mashriqul wal maghrib and to allah belongs east and west so wherever you might be turned their face towards allah indeed allah is encompassing and knowing they say allah has taken a son exalted is he subhanahu to him belongs whatever in heaven and earth allah devotedly obedient to him the uh, means everything obeys allah ask yourself what what do i do the fact is that he is the originator of the heavens and earth when he decrees matter he is only to it be and it is Uh, yaqulu lahu kun fayakun and ayah number 118 surah al-baqara wa qala allazina those who do not know say why does allah does not speak to us they come to us a sign the spoke those before them like their words their hearts resemble each other we have shown clearly the signs to a people who are certain in faith so inna arsalna ka bil haqqi bashiran wa nazira indeed we have sent o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with truth as a bringer of good tidings and warning the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave good news to those who obey allah and gave warning to those who disobey why to threaten them to shame them no in order to help them stop their wrong doing and you will not be asked about the companions of the hell fire so we have to check ourselves what we are doing we are not answerable for the others and in this ayah and the fact is that never will jews or christian approve of you they will never approve of your religion of your law of your way of prophethood or of your book until you follow their religion say indeed the guidance of allah is the only guidance 
قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ هُوَ هُدَى If a person wants to be guided, then they have to follow the guidance of Allah. If you are to follow the desire after what has come to you of the knowledge, you would have against Allah no protector or helper. So after gaining knowledge, one should not follow the desire of the people or the desire of the nafs. And Numan ibn Bashir said, Shaitan has snares and traps. The traps of shaitan, they are to exult ungratefully in the blessing of Allah, to boast about the gifts of Allah, to have pride at the expense of the slaves of Allah and to follow desires for other than the sake of Allah. Meaning, instead of obeying Allah, then a person follows their desires. Then such a person has actually been caught in trap of shaitan. So they must do something to set themselves free. Al-Lazina Atayna Humul Kitab. So here, those to whom we have given the book, Yat Lunahu Hakadilavati, they recited with its true recital. Ulai Kayu Minuna Bihi. They are the one who truly believe in it. And whoever disbelieve in it, it is they who are loser. Tilawa of the book, recitation of the book, not just a mere recitation, but haq of the tilawa. What is the haq of tilawa? To recite it with true recital. It's not just to recite it with perfect tajweed or with beautiful voice, but it is to declare the law of the Quran as lawful and unlawful is unlawful. It is to believe in muhkam and mutashabiha. To believe in all contents of Quran and it is to follow the muhkam meaning the commands that Quran gives. The person should follow them when they do that. Then they are truly reciting the book of Allah. Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, remember my favor which I have bestowed upon you that I preferred you over the words and fear a day when no soul will suffice for another at all and no one compensation will be accepted nor will any intercession benefit it nor will they be aided do something for yourself before that day and ayah number 124 and mentioned when Ibrahim al-Islam was tried by his Lord with the commands and he fulfilled them. Allah said, indeed, I will make you a leader for the people. So here in this ayah, the one who passes the test is worthy of leadership. So Ibrahim al-Islam is this also for my descendants. Allah said, my covenant does not include the wrongdoers. So this leadership is not inherited. You understand? And I number 125 and mentioned that we made the house a place of return for the people, Kaaba, and place of security and take, O believers, from standing place of Ibrahim, a place of prayer. And we charge Ibrahim Ismail saying, purify my house, means clean the Kaaba. For those who perform tawaf and those who were staying there to worship, those who bow and prostrate in prayer. So we learn in this ayah that Kaaba is Masabatal Nasi, a place of return for the people. May Allah allow us to return to his house again and again. We do want, right? We try to go for the Umrah again and again. We want to do Hajj properly. And mention when Ibrahim al-Islam said, My Lord, make this a secure city and provide its people with fruits. Whoever of them believe in Allah. And the last day, Allah said, Whoever disbelieve, I will grant him enjoyment for little. Meaning in this life, then I will force uh, him to the punishment of the fire and Richard is the destination and I number 127 here and mentioned when Ibrahim al-Islam was raising the foundation of the house with his smile both father and son worshipping Allah and what they are saying here Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiyul alim so father and son worshipping Allah building his house and saying this dua, our Lord accept this from us. Rabbana taqabbal minna. Inna kanta samiyul alim. Indeed, you are the hearing, the knowing. They, 
they were building the house of Allah, the Kaaba, and still they were calling upon Him. And what were they saying? Allah accept this from us. The believer is concerned about the acceptance of the deeds, not just performance. This is their wish that Ya Allah, please accept this. And this was the humility of these great prophets. And we should also be humble. And no matter what we do, we should beg Allah to accept our deeds we should not take it for granted nor should we boast about our deeds or consider that we are doing allah a favor by doing something no this is allah's favor on us rabbana waja'alna muslimaina lak wa min zurriyatina ummatan muslimatan lak so here our lord and now the following duas and our lord make us muslim in submission to you from our descendants muslim nation in submission to you arina manasikna and show us uh, our rights manasikna watub alayna accept our repentance inna kanta tawwabur rahim indeed you are the accepting of the repentance the merciful more duas of ibrahim and ismail al islam look at their duas oh allah where uh, they are constructing the building but you also give us the ability to worship you you see sometimes we participate in the building of mosque and in the various activities in service that are offered at the mosque but what about worship what about worship ibrahim al islam said warina manasikna show us the way of worship meaning enable us to worship you also it is not enough to just have a masjid it is temper it is important to worship allah place and remember that just because we are not being able to go to masjid uh, because of this uh, pandemic we are taking care of sometimes we are going sometimes we are not it doesn't mean that we stop worshiping allah we should get busy ourselves in making dua in making zikr especially tawbah you know that we are taking preventive measures some are going some are not going and um, part of our uh, deen is taking preventive measures also but if you are going it take the preventive measures if you are at home you are doing the uh, ibadah but no matter what the things are still we have to do it there is no excuse for stopping our ibadah ibrahim al islam was making dua over here and this dua was not just for himself for the people of this time but he was also making dua for the people to come and he was truly a visionary what was he praying for and now in following aya he is making dua rabbana wa ba'as fihim rasula he said our lord send among them meaning my progeny the people who will live in this land the people who will come in the future send among them a messenger from themselves what he will do yatlu alayhim ayatika who will recite to them your verses wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab wal-hikma and he will teach them the book and wisdom wa yuzakkihim and he will purify them innaka antal azizul hakim indeed you are exalted in mind and wise so look at the concern that ibrahim al islam said for his descendant oh allah send them a prophet who will recite your book to them who will teach them your book who will teach them wisdom who will purify them from inside and outside who will make them better people think about it what do i do we make for our children even if we don't have children right now but what do i do we make for our future generation that what should they get what is that we pray for for our children that what should they get uh, in their lives even after our lives typically we pray for the marriage we pray for the education we pray for the wealth and their health their job what about their deen we should pray for both rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan qina azab an-nar surah al-baqarah ayah number 201 ibrahim al islam also prayed for both he said provide them fruits give them food give them sustenance but he wanted not just worldly sustenance not just physical sustenance he wants spiritual sustenance because the real life is the life of the hereafter after that so we need to think are we concerned for the religious education of our children their spiritual development as we are for the physical and worldly development we are concerned about their physical health what about the spiritual health we go to one doctor another doctor are we concerned about the spiritual health 
we are concerned about their worldly education what about their religious education many children they don't know how to read quran many children they don't know how to pray once their amen ceremony is done you don't even bother to see whether the children are reading or not because children are very innocent whether they are like you know in teens also they don't know shaitan is a open enemy are we concerned for that are we guiding guiding them are we concerned only about this life we should be concerned about this life and the eternity after life and i number 130 wa may yarghab an millata ibrahim illa man safiha nafsa would who could be averse to the religion of ibrahim al islam except one who make a fool to himself so who would be averse to the way of ibrahim al islam except someone who is fool meaning they are only pursuing the world and we had chosen ibrahim in this world and indeed he is in the hereafter will be among the righteous fil akhirati lamina salihin what is the what is so special about ibrahim al islam what is the way of ibrahim al islam so is qala lahu rabbuhu aslim qul aslamtu li rabbil alamin when his lord said to them submit he said i have submitted to the lord of the worlds look at the submission there and then and ibrahim al islam instructed his son to do the same so did yaqub al islam what did they say they said oh my sons indeed allah has chosen for you this religion so do not die except while you are muslim this is so important ya banayya inna allah istafa lakum ad-din fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun how important is this dua for us also that we pray for the islam of our children we also make them promise we teach them we prepare them that you must guard your faith we teach them that without islam there is no salvation so they should worship allah until the very end of their lives or where you witness that death approaches yaqub meaning he was at his last breath when he said to his sons what will you worship after me and we need to think have we ever asked our children the same question what is it that you worship what is it that you all will worship for the rest of your lives they said we will worship your god and the god of your father ibrahim and ismail and ishaq one god and we are muslim in submission to him ibrahim al islam said aslam tu li rabbil alamin and his children his grandchildren also said nahnu lahu muslimun subhanallah tilka ummatun qad qalat allah says that was a nation which has passed on laha ma kasabat wa lakum ma kasabtu it will have the consequence of what it earned and you will have what you have earned each person will be compensated what they did and you will not be asked about what they used to do and this is something we need to reflect over also our elders have gone their deeds they gathered their righteous deeds left at their time so we should not settle with just pride over their accomplishment we are their children that we are their grandchildren they will have their own good deeds we need to do something for ourselves and something for our own progeny children they say be jews or christian so you will be guided just as many people claim today join this group join the said the only you will be guided kul bal millata ibrahim see rather we follow the religion of ibrahim inclining towards the truth and he was not of the mushrikeen wa ma kana min al mushrikeen ayah number 136 qulu qulu amanna billahi all of you should say amanna billahi we have believed in allah wa ma unzila ilaina and we have believed in what has been revealed to us wa ma unzila ila ibrahim and what was revealed to ibrahim by ismaila wa ishaq wa yaquba wa lasbat 
and what was revealed to Ismail and Ishaq and Yaqub and the descendants, meaning the prophets from among the Bani Israel. Wama Utiya Musa wa Isa, and we believe in what was given to Musa and Isa. Wama Util, Wama Utiya Nabi Yuna Mir Rabbihim, and we believe in whatever has given to prophets from their Lord. La Nufarrihu Bayna Ahadim Minhum. We make no distinction between any of them. We believe in all of them. We honor all of them. Muslimun, And we are Muslim in submission to him. To Allah alone. So Muslim believe in all prophets of Allah. In all of the revelation that Allah has sent down. And this is what perfects the religion. Because remember denying even one prophet is like denying all of them. In Hadith in Sahih Muslim Ibn Abbas radiallahu reported that Prophet وسلم, would recite this ayah in the first rakah of the Sunnah, prayer of Fajr. So we should also memorize this ayah and recite in Salah. Kulu amanna billahi wa ma unzila ilayna wa ma unzila ila Ibrahima wa Ismaila wa Isaqa wa Yaquba wa al-Asbata wa ma utiya Musa wa Isa wa ma utiya nabiyyuna nabiyyuna min rabbihim la nufarriku bayna ahadim minhum wa nahnu lahu muslimun Ayah number 137 So if they believe in the same as you believe in meaning if the rest of the people believe in the same way as the companions of Prophet ﷺ, then they have been rightly guided. But if they turn away, they were only in dissension and Allah will be sufficient for you against them. Uh, so here Allah will be sufficient for you against them. So don't fear them. What was Samiul Alim? He is hearing and knowing. And Sibqadullah. Here take color of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see ours is the color of Allah. What is the color of Allah? This refers to the religion of Allah, meaning this is what we should adopt. You should also adopt. Why? Because Waman Ahsanu min Allah and who is better than Allah in ordaining religion? And we are worshippers of him. You see the religion should become such a part of our lives. It should become our identity. That is something constant. No matter where we go. No matter what we are going through. Just like when a cloth is dyed with a certain color. That color becomes its identity. So the religion of Allah. Worshipping Allah alone should become our identity. And in following ayah, say, O Prophet, وسلم, do you argue with us about Allah while well, He is our Lord and your Lord for us are our deeds, for you are your deed, and we are sincere to Him. So, Nahnu Lahu Mukhlisun. Or do you say, Ibrahim and Ismail and Ishaq and Yaqub and descendants were Jews or Christians? Meaning, did they belong? To a group like this, did they carry all these labels or you know? See, are you knowing or it is Allah who is more unjust than one who conceal a testimony he has from Allah and Allah is not aware of what they do. So Wamallahu bigafilin ammatamaloon tilka ummatun kad kalat. So here talking about the ummah that is a nation which has passed now. Laha ma kasabat wala kumma kasabtum. It will have the consequence of what it earned, and you will have what you earned. Wala tus aluna amma kano yamalun, and you will not be asked about what they used to do. So this ayah has been repeated again. Why? So that a person does not rely on the accomplishment of others, on the good deeds of the others people that may, my parents, my ancestors or my, they were righteous, we are from the Ummah of Prophets. Yes, this is something to be, feel good about it. But you can't rely upon the good deeds of your forefathers. 
each person is responsible for what they do each person will get what they have earned and also sometimes you know we make uh, our children uh, in uh, like you know he they hips the quran or they learn the quran and we think that we get uh, like uh, beneficial from it yes of course uh, that's a good deed but what about us no barrier of burden will bear the burden of other and person will get the result of their own deeds no one will be questioned about the deeds of another and on the day of judgment no person's lineage no person kingship will benefit them so we all need to take our life seriously we all need to prepare for the day that we will meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because maliki yawmitin and for that we have to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in you alone we worship you alone we ask for help ehdina siratal mustaqim ya allah guide us to the straight path guide us to the knowledge that is beneficial and guide us to the action that will be pleasing to you i would encourage you to think about three action points that you can take from what we discuss uh, in this uh, juz uh, like you know you will be uh, you will have something that you can look back and you know you can remind yourself of it so that you can keep these gems with you and share with others also so you have to make sure that whatever we are learning for you for ourselves and rectify our mistakes and keep doing good no matter what so in juz number 1 we start with the suratul fatiha suratul fatiha without that our prayer is incomplete and surah fatiha is the one surah which we keep repeating in every salah and without the surah fatiha our salah is incomplete so we should recite suratul fatiha and suratul fatiha has different names surkhiya sabaul masani Ummul Kitab, Fatiha, Yaftahu means opening of the book. Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah, whoever reads Surah Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran, the shade of the birds, flock of the birds of the clouds will shade in the hereafter because the, in the hereafter there will be lot of heat and shaitan will flee away from the home. Whoever recites Surah Al-Baqarah, who don't, it's a hasra. Uh, uh like it's a remorse it's better you learn and recite it if not you can play and learn how to recite it and we learn about uh, the people of book jews christians and also we learn about the uh, hypocrites we learn about the believers in the starting then we learn about uh, the disbelievers kafir and then munafiq that is the person we which we don't know it's really hard to find out who is munafiq and who is not because they are signs but for sure allah knows who has nifaq and creation of adam al islam and instead of adam and hawa al islam is mentioned couple of times and one of the time is mentioned in juz number 1 and different examples has been given an explanation of that and the baqara means cow the incident of cow has been mentioned to sacrifice the cow and that uh, uh meat will be put on the deceased person and he will witness who murdered that deceased person and bani israel how uh, musa al islam rescued them but still they were not thankful because of slavery their mind also not working in a right way and sincerity of ibrahim al islam how he was focused to one al ban allah and he was thanking allah subhanahu wa taala and we should also be thankful to allah subhanahu wa taala we should have that submission towards allah subhanahu wa taala may allah guide us all jazakallah khairan kaseera subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka natubu ilaik do subscribe the channel please afrin fatima bint sajida ilm quran for all bayan